Here's what happens when you get hold of this doctrine. It's going to draw you to holiness. When you know in your spirit that you has been specifically called out from among the world and that God himself called you out from all over the world, called you to be a part of his kingdom, you. It should do something to you. How can I not give praise to him? Now if I think, that in my own free will, I made the choice myself. I made the choice myself. God didn't have anything to do with it. I decided to be saved, and God said, okay, I'll save you. And I can choose one way or the other, to like it or not like it. It was all of me. But when you realize you were called for that purpose, I put this statement in, and Terry says, I don't understand any of it. She reads my outline before it, and I said, Lord Jones said, the man whose interest is purely psychological and whose life is not turned towards godliness is a believer in philosophical determinism, not the truth of God. And my comment was, go home and look in the dictionary and find out what those philosophical determinism is. Stretch your mind. Richard, I want you to find what those mean by this evening. He continues, that is counterfeit and entirely spurious. He says also, if you are filled with the spirit of militant partisanship, again, you are probably arguing philosophically. And believe me, I've engaged in that many times. Just for the purpose of engaging into conversation trying to convince a person with my attitude and militant ideas, I missed the point. The whole point. Of the whole purpose of this text. I have learned that this being the truth of God always humbles. Without a doubt, because it is the highest, it is the most humbling of all truths. The higher the truth, the more it should humble us the more glorious the truth, the more ought we to be amazed and astonished at it. If you are not amazed and astonished that God chose you to be saved, you haven't got it yet. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for me. Not for the world, for the call. Those whom he called, he died, he, he saved and he saw my life when it wasn't so pretty. But he had a purpose for me, and he brought me to that point. Can I ask, what is your reaction to these truths and this doctrine? I hope that you're not like the people that my friend said today when he heard I was going to preach on this. Try not to make anybody mad. If you understand the purpose of our salvation, then you'll understand this is true. Is it a slogan that you wave on a banner? Is it just a slogan that you just say, well, I'm a Calvinist with some militant at attitude like I have in the past? I don't wear it on my forehead. Do I understand when I say predestination that I'm, I'm saying something that's not there? So just what is your attitude about your banner? Are you waiting patiently for a decision of election and predestination? A discussion? If so, beware. We are at the foot of a very holy mountain. When we are speaking of God's method of salvation and how He saved us in His purpose, we're on holy ground. It's a very high mountain to climb. And if you imagine that you can run up this mountain, you're deceiving yourself. You can't do it on your own. Can I say that this doctrine is not for argument or for a banner? It's pastoral. 
Can I give you that when why did Paul put these verses in after verse 28? He just didn't throw it in. He put verse 29 and 30 in to explain how verse 28 can be possible. It is comfort for the children of God, for believers faced with trials and tribulations who do not know what to pray as they ought, God, Paul, gives us an answer. Now, as we have half and are looking at these verses one step at a time, <coughs> what we must not forget, they are part of a whole theme and must never be isolated along. We need to see this doctrine in their setting. In other words, you can't say, well, we, we are predestinated and leave out verse 28. The terms, the five terms in verses 29 and 30 explain for us how verse 28 is possible. The terms all things predestined, called, justified, and glorified must always be seen as a whole. When you pull out any part of those five phases, it's going to make the one part look way out of whack. In other words, if you pull out predestined and try to explain it apart from the called, or justified, or glorified, it's not going to make any sense. As you take the whole doctrine in its setting, take every particular statement in its complete surroundings, they are but individual links in a chain and they can only be understood in their relationship to the other links and to the whole chain. When you pull one chain away from the other chain, it breaks the whole chain. And it's one chain. You can't understand any of it unless you put all of them together. So, what is the key to understanding of this truth? The way to move towards it is to ask the question, why did Paul add verse 29 and verse 30 after saying, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose, that was the statement. And then he said, that is a complete statement in and of itself. Why did Paul add this exposition, this explanation, which we have in verse 29 and 30? As I've already said in verse 28, is not merely intended to give us comfort in trouble. We always look at verse 28 when we're in trouble. The only time we ever quote verse 28 is when somebody's going through trials or trouble. That's what Paul is saying. But to give us the ultimate comfort of knowing that our final salvation is sure and that everything that happens to us is but a part of that salvation. God has called us to salvation for the purpose of being with Him in glory forever, and He's called a group of believers to come together to worship and serve Him forever. I've got a call. He's called me on this earth to serve Him, and He's given you a call to serve Him while you're here. Amen. But that call continues to be for all eternity. And God planned... In eternity past, he said, I want to call. That's why he created earth. That's why he created mankind. Because he wanted a group of people that he could redeem and bring glory to him forever and forever and forever. And he didn't leave it up to chance. By his own predetermined thinking, he chose by His grace to redeem some to be a part of His plan forever and forever and forever. Right. And when He called you, you became a part of that plan. 
don't know about you, but what a wonderful privilege that is. 